A little under a year ago, I released a video discussing an interesting trend when it comes to MLB Stadium upper decks, specifically the right field upper decks, noticing in Coors Field and Progressive Field alike, along with even Bush Stadium, a lot of these teams opting to remove seats and put in some type of standing room bar area in their outfield upper decks. Well, in seeing some of the recent renderings, it's gotten... Even more ridiculous when it comes to what's going on with MLB Stadium upper decks. They are basically evaporating before our very eyes. And teams are opting to go with the model where there's a lot more seating and built up areas beyond the outfield walls rather than have bigger upper decks. And now the capacity of many of these stadiums is well under 40K. Even the Chicago White Sox came out with a rendering recently that I want to talk about, but the first one that really shows you what's happening with these upper decks is the brand new rendering that was just updated from the Kansas City Royals. Now, this first image I'm showing was the original projection, and you can see the upper deck. It is a little bit smaller, kind of reminds me of Target Field. By the way, Target Field does have a very good modern upper deck themselves, and that was the original model, and it was kind of like, all right, that's a standard upper deck, no problem there. Take a look at the updated model of the Royals' new ballpark that was just released recently. Seemingly, they've split the upper deck in half, and they've cut it a lot, and it's a lot lower. And you also have on the one side a very interesting split-looking model. Now, we've seen split upper decks at a few other stadiums, but never to this degree to where the upper deck is already so small, and then they're going to split it down the third baseline. There's nothing to it. And then, of course, there's going to be no right or left field upper deck. Those are going away completely. I just think that's a crazy rendering, and we're seeing it in multiple different stadiums, at least with the recent renderings. I mean, obviously the Rays are not a great, you know, team to compare to because the Rays are always going to have low capacity because of their attendance problems. But you can see this is really the only photo they released. We can't even get a look at the upper deck, but it doesn't seem very big at all. Not surprising there. If you take a look at the Howard Terminal model, they've got a very small, well, I guess you could consider that second, second section an upper deck maybe, Howard Terminal, you know, it's not happening anyways, but even still, you can see the model and how small it is. And then the recently released renderings of the Chicago White Sox, you can see their upper deck seemingly split into two sections, and it is sectioned off and very small. So the upper decks are getting tiny. This is interesting because when we originally saw the Las Vegas renderings, they had barely any outfield seating, and I had made a reference and said, this looks like a minor league stadium because there's such little seating in the outfield. With the capacity being only 35K, their original renderings, which many of us suspect were thrown together last second just to get something up, and they've basically admitted that by saying we're throwing them away because they're crap. Their original renderings had a built-up, bigger upper deck with very limited outfield seating. The problem with that is it makes the outfield seating very minimal. It does not look like an MLB stadium. And if you're going to have a stadium with a capacity so low, and I'm talking like lower than 35K... Now, I believe the White Sox are shooting for around 38,000, but you've got teams like the Rays at around 30K, the Vegas is around 30K, and even the Royals, it looks like they're under 35,000. You really can't have the best of both worlds to where you've got a built-up upper deck and built-up outfield seating, so these teams are seemingly opting to build up their outfield seating and add in second decks to the outfield rather than build up and make their upper deck bigger, and it's really making the upper decks look ridiculously small, and you might say, well, this doesn't matter. Well, let me tell you, if these stadiums actually get built and you go to a game there, it is going to be very noticeable. Like, when you compare the current upper decks that we have pretty much all around baseball, they are completely built up. They're at least 30 rows up. This is drastically going to change how MLB stadiums look if these building techniques continue to be used. You could just say, well, these are just a few smaller market cities that are only going to have, you know, capacities of around 30K. It's not the standard. It's not the modern situation. But I would actually say I think we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And they're sacrificing capacity because they really don't care about that 
four quality and four standing room areas. Even the situation with Vegas where they're only going to have the capacity around 30K, you would think they're still going to get an all-star game. And that's just going to be the capacity. It is what it is. They don't want a situation like what happened at Coors Field, like what happened at Progressive Field to where they're removing seats. And by the way, the Cleveland Guardians renovation is pretty crazy considering they're even removing more seats. Although it is a little bit complicated because technically they are adding seats back to their upper deck down the first baseline. Down the third baseline, they're removing them, uh, but they're doing their kind of fixer-up renovation this offseason to their upper deck where they're changing some things, and I actually think it might look a little bit worse even than the shipping containers. I don't know. I want to reserve judgment, but to me, I'm getting FedEx field vibes because you can still see the supports. I don't know. I'm concerned about the Guardians renovation. I guess we'll see, but either way, and then the other upper deck I wanted to talk about was the Utah model. So Utah recently released their new upgraded stadium rendering a lot of people coming out saying this is not very detailed I agree I think they're going to release another one that's even more detailed when it comes to the outfield seating but they actually do have a more built up upper deck it reminds me exactly of PNC Park and why not model it right after something like that because people have praised PNC Park for the way they made their stadium They've got a large upper deck, but it's not elongated to where it wraps around one of the foul poles or anything like that. And even other teams, I mean, so many of these teams going with the split upper deck, the Rangers, their new stadium is exactly what that is. So we're seeing less and less of this model. You can see I'm referring to Chase Field. I think Chase Field is the next upper deck to be renovated. I would be shocked if they do not remove substantial seats from the Chase Field upper deck and replace them with standing room areas. And I would also look at T-Mobile Park in Seattle, possibly their right field upper deck on the chopping block to be removed or to be replaced. That's been talked about for a while now and it hasn't happened. I'll have to, we'll have to see if something ends up happening there. But I, I, this is extreme what they're doing. I mean, I could understand it if it was, you know, an Oakland situation where they're going to have limited attendance. They don't need a bigger upper deck. Same thing with the Rays. But now we're seeing the Royals, the White Sox, these teams coming out with just very limited upper deck seating. It doesn't even look like an MLB stadium. I get why they're doing it. It is a more modern technique, but I, I would pitch and say, you know, if I was designing a stadium and you wanted as minimal of, of an upper deck as possible, I like the target field design because at least it still feels like an MLB stadium. The thing wraps around and it looks decent. The, the renderings that I've seen recently are just really, really minimal. And it almost gives me the vibe of like less than an MLB stadium. But I guess that's just something we're going to get have to get used to as Major League Baseball and these architects can continue to evolve and change their stadiums because they realize nobody in the modern day wants to really sit up in the upper deck and they'd rather have standing room spaces in the outfield and things like that. So this is just kind of an evolution of the upper decks. Although I will say, you want to talk about a team that actually is going kind of old school, although they also do have a split upper deck. It is the Orlando Dreamers. So the Orlando Dreamers want to have a stadium with a capacity of 45,000 which is basically unheard of when it comes to MLB stadiums right now, at least all the renderings, all the, the models that we've seen, capacities are under 40K. The Dreamers, the only way they'd get a team, I think, would be through relocation of the Tampa Bay Rays. But it is interesting to see even their design is a split upper deck. You don't want those massive, uninterrupted walls of seats that's exactly what chase field has like i'm describing what chase field is to a t that has got to be the most grotesque design at this point in mlb baseball but guys that is going to do it for this video make sure you follow me on x link to that's always in the description